Hi, this is John with The Evolving World. Today I'm doing a quick video on how to recover Freon R134A out of a modern automobile. So this is a pretty simple process and I thought I'd just do a quick video on it. And so the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need to buy a manifold set. This one's, this particular model is from Harbor Freight, it's like 60 bucks. Then you're going to need a recovery machine. This one, this particular model is a Robin Air RG3. Got this on Amazon for about 400 And then you're going to need a tank. And that's essentially it. This is a 30 gallon, or 30 pound, sorry, 30 pound capacity. And it's, um, this is about $70 on, e on um, Amazon. And then also, you'll just need a few fittings. So you'll need an additional hose. So I bought this hose right here. This is like an R134A hose. It's half inch Acme fittings. That's about $17 on Amazon. And then um, this particular unit has quarter inch um, uh, outlets here, connections. So this is a half inch connector. So what I needed, I needed these little adapters right here. So I needed one for here, and then I needed one here. And then this particular tank was fitted with that type of, same type of thing, this, the uh, smaller fitting. So I needed an additional one right here. So I needed three of those. Actually, you can get these at Napa for about four bucks a piece. So about 12 bucks. So the total system price is about, um, about 600 bucks or so, give or take. Um, seems kind of pricey, but if you're gonna be doing multiple projects, such as myself, um, I, I wanna be able to recover this Freon and be able to recharge the system when I put it all back together again. So that's basically what we're gonna be doing. So the R134A system is actually pretty simple. It's pretty idiot proof um, compared to the R12. It has, um, Basically the biggest difference is it has different size adapters, so it makes it pretty much idiot proof. If you look at the size of this one versus the uh, blue pipe, this one's a little bit smaller right here. So um, basically the red is the high side, it's right here. So everything that's red is, is the high side and that is the uh, liquid side. And that's basically physically the higher port. So like in this particular case, it's located right here. So it's actually physically higher than the low port, which is the low port on this car is back here, and it's actually physically lower, and that's the uh, that's the vapor side. So that's really all you need to know. Um, it's not like I said. It's the blue. You pretty much you can't really put this one on this port over here. It just won't work because you can see that the um, the sizes are different. So it makes it idiot proof basically. So that's good. So it's pretty simple to do. You don't have to, you know, take your car into a shop. You pretty much do all this yourself um, using this equipment here. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. So let's go ahead and connect this thing up. Okay, now that our connections are made, it's pretty simple. You just pull this back, slam it in. It's no big deal. And over here, the next thing you want to do is you want to you want to weigh your your tank. So this is a brand new tank. Just bought it. So I just weighed it. So it's this particular one is 16 pounds empty. And so we want to know what the weight is before we start putting stuff into it because um, that's one way how we're going to measure how many pounds of um, uh, Freon that we're taking out of it. So this is a 30 pound unit and so um, generally they recommend that 80% or so is what you want to use. So we're just, just to be even safer, we'll say 75 so keep it, keep it simple. So three quarters of that is about 22.5 pounds. So we never want to put anything more than 22 additional pounds into here. So that would make it about 38.5 pounds. So we'll keep track of um, as we add to this. And we'll know when we get to about that weight total that, that this tank is full. So we don't want to go anything over 80% of that capacity. Next step, you want to open up the valves. So you want to just start doing them in sequence here. So you want to just start here at the car. Open up these two a bit. And then um, open them up here and then make sure that as you're doing that, make sure that, that the pressure readings show properly. And then you start to open it right here through a line filter into the machine. Okay, so that one wasn't open all the way. So now we've got some pressure in the system. Okay, that's what we need to see here. Yeah, it should be up around 70, 65, something in that range right there. Open this up nice and good here. So that's our readings right now. 
So now we're charged up to this section here. So now we'll go ahead and open this up. And now we'll open up our valve to our machine here. There we go. Now you see everything is uh, charged. Should be about the same numbers. 65, this one says 60. This one says, what's that, 70-ish? And it's about 70 or 65, so a little bit of discrepancy here. Maybe this valve right here is not loosened up enough. Or there's just a discrepancy in the gauges. We have different gauges here. Pretty close though, that's what we want to see. So now we got that going. So now, let's go ahead and open this up real quick. That's to our tank. So let me go ahead and close that back up again. And here, now we're going to want to purge the air out of the system. Let me go ahead and just set the camera down here a little bit. You hear like a little tiny of sizz, just a little pss. That's all you want to do. You want to be extremely careful or you don't want to blow a bunch of freon in your face or anything. But it is shut off right here, so it's not like it's going to be that much. It's, going to, it's only going to be what little bit is in the hose, basically. So now we'll tighten this back up. Now we'll go ahead and open up our, our valve for our tank here that up all the way and now we should be good to go well let's make sure this is open there we go we've got stuff going into the tank right away must be the liquid or something if you notice our pressure dropped a little bit probably the liquid Let's go ahead and turn this on. Actually, why don't we just wait a little bit and let's see what happens here. Let's settle down a little bit here. Everything's open. Let's go ahead and hit the machine. Find how long this takes. I'll probably go ahead and cut it because you don't want to watch this happen. It's going to be pretty boring. I think it takes about 15 minutes or so, but we'll see what happens. We'll watch our uh, numbers and see. Go down here. Actually, this is real time. Maybe I'm going to take that moment. Maybe we'll just film it. So basically, the machine is pumping all of the stuff out of the system. 80% of it is gas. We need to move that material from the pressurized system into the pressurized tank. There is restriction in the line to some degree. So some systems might be faster than others. That's why some of these machines are expensive. This one's a, probably a lower mid-range model. Light duty use. Not really a shop use, but more like a occasional use. So as you can see, it's going down. We should see about zero or so. Pressure is dropping. So yeah, it won't take too long. So here you see the uh, what it looks like when it's in the mixer down there. So these two are mixing together, gas and liquid. It's kind of a kind of a freon color, I mean kind of a cooling color like a dry color. I might just go ahead and just keep filming. That way it gives you an idea of how long it takes. We're doing it in real time here, so. Fast forward the video if you don't like this part, but uh, 
otherwise we'll just keep on going, real time, see how long this takes. pretty quiet, but to do a view of this machine is actually very, very quiet. Just kind of humming away. A little bit of air coming out this side. This thing we tend to get hot. Some of these pipes will get a little bit hot, I believe. Yeah, this one's a little warm. This one's ice cold. That's ice cold, ice cold. Actually, this one's, this one's moderate. This is, about, this is about room temperature right here, the vapor side low for it. L liquid side is icy cold right here. And the combo is about in the middle. That's going into our system and then coming out of the machine, it's pretty warm right here. So that's the thing. You want to make sure you don't, don't, get, don't get this thing like extremely hot. This is actually not even, this is like body temperature basically. Make sure our tank doesn't get to be too hot or anything. Seems fine. Yeah, look at that. It's down to zero on this machine. We'll probably know when we don't see anything else going through. But we got most of it out. So we're down to zero, coming up on zero here. A little discrepancy in our gauges here. But this, honestly, this one wasn't zeroed out when I started, so it might have been uh, due to the, the temperature or, or something out here that's just not. Ah, we need to close to zero on this one. Looks like we're at zero on this one. So, yeah, did you see any other one this today? Looks like we're done. That looks pretty done to me. All of our numbers are showing zero. We're still showing pressure on this. I think that's because this thing is on and pushing vacuum to the machine. It looks like our system is flat over here, so I think it's pretty much good to go. So let me go ahead and uh, what you want to do is you want to start closing the, uh, the valves here. Starting at the car. Close our valves. Turn off the machine. Okay, so everything is shut off now. We have all the valves closed and everything. We have this one left open right here. There's a little bit of Freon gas in the, uh, the machine to the hose. You have to let a little bit of air out of the system right here to kind of take out the last of the air and a little bit of gas that's, that's between the machine and the tank. This is already shut off, so we're not putting a thousand in there, and this is shut off here, so there's nothing coming out of the car to the machine. It's really just from the machine to the tank. There's a tiny little bit of pressure that gets in the system here. So it won't recover 100%, but it should be hopefully 95% or something like that. So a little bit, we just loosen this up a little bit. You can hear it coming out. Gently let it go down to zero, there we go. Now we're down to zero. I'm not sure exactly how many uh, pounds of uh, that is there, but uh, hopefully, like I said, it's not 100% recovery. There we go. Let's go weigh this sucker and see how much we took out. Okay, let me go ahead and put this on the scale here. See what we got. There it is, 16.8. So that's about, um, what is that? About 10, 11 ounces. And so um, I got a can here. And so this is, um, typical can is about 12 ounces for a full can here. So that's probably, Probably most of a can right there. You know, it's pretty much about a can right there. So, yeah, I think we got most of it out. So that should pretty much do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you did. Many more to come, including um, 
using the same captured recovered Freon, we're going to go ahead and charge up the system on another car when I put it back together. So that's coming in a future video.